Hello, friends. This is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor at ClassicsToday.com. You know, one of the most wonderful things about the classical music record industry is that you can still make records after you're dead. Case in point, here we have Bernard Heitink with the Bavarian Radio Symphony Orchestra on the BR Classic label doing Mahler 7th. Now, of course, Heitink wasn't really dead when he made this recording. He just sounds like he's dead when he made this recording because this is a snooze fest. It's just dreadful. And the fact that he's dead means, of course, that BR Classic can exploit his legacy to their heart's content and keep releasing Heitink recordings as long as they have them to release. Heitink was, of course, known as a Mahler guy. Perhaps not really fairly. I mean, he did a lot because in Amsterdam they did a lot of Mahler. So it was part of his heritage. And when he first got the Concertgebouw Orchestra, they made some beautiful, beautiful Mahler performances, especially of Symphonies 2 and 3. Um, you know, you could argue 4, 9 was marvelous, and 7. 7 was fabulous. That first Amsterdam 7th why? Because, you know, and to talk about composers who sound better, the less you do to them, Mahler is one of those composers. You know, he is so detailed and so specific in what's he want, what he wants. And the only issue is, are you going to give him what he wants? If you give him what he wants, it sounds fabulous. If you don't give him what he wants, it's not so fabulous. Well, in that first Mahler 7th, Heitink actually did what Mahler wanted, for the most part. He really did. And the unique sound of the orchestra and its 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 immersion in Mahler's own special symphonic idiom and timbral idiom worked wonders. It was marvelous. Then the digital era happened, and Philips, which had just figured out how to put like bass in their recordings and do some other things like that, decided to re-record a lot of stuff. And one of the things they re-recorded was the Mahler 7th, and that was awful because Heitink had matured and had decided that he had some preferences that were sort of contrary to what Mahler wanted. And, and Phillips didn't know how to give him good sound. So what we got was a duller, less well-recorded version of Mahler 7th with the Concertgebouw. And that's where matters stood, more or less, I guess, until this thing showed up. And this is easily the worst of all. Heitink did not get better with age. Some things he did in Beethoven he did, for example. But in this, no, 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 no. It's a snooze fest, as I said at the beginning of this chat. What's the problem? Well, it's not that the tempos are wrong. The tempos are not bad, until, except for two exceptions, which we'll get to. The first movement, you know you're in trouble. You just know you're in trouble. It's... I mean, it's all about accent, accent and color and rhythm. And this is so soggy. It's just terrible. And as the first movement gets going, it, it never wakes up. It's not that it's terribly slow. It's just soft, soft in terms of, in terms of, 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 of point, accent, you know? It's just nothing happens. So then we get the second movement, which is fine. I mean, it's almost unkillable. It's, it's beautiful. It's nocturnal. It's not badly done. The scherzo, though, oh, my God. Terrible. I mean, the scherzo is supposed to spook you out. It's supposed to be slithery. Mahler marks it schattenhaft, shadowy. This is nothing. There's no shadow here at all. It's just blomp, eh, blomp, eh, eh, blomp, eh, blomp, eh. I mean, it's just such a not happening. It's just horrible. It's too slow. It's totally lacking in color and atmosphere. I mean, completely, utterly, totally. Okay. Now, the second knock music is rather quick. It's quick and zippy, and it's pretty, and it's nicely done again, and there's nothing problem with that. But the finale, it's almost 20 minutes long. We're talking like Klemper Tempe, you know, bump, but it up, 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 but it up. Oh my God. It's horrible. It's unlistenable. It's so horrible. It is so pokey. I mean, pokey, you know, you just, it never, it never gets, it's like, it's like, it's like a, a dead body that's barely, you know, you just, you know, oh. 
a joke. Ridiculous. Never should have been released. It's a blot on this conductor's career as a Mahalarian. And, and now that he's dead, I mean, can we give this a rest? Do we really need more high tink? Fred? More high tink? <laughs> no, we don't need more high tink. Do we need more Mahler from this guy? Who recorded over and over and over and over and over again the same stuff, all while saying that Mahler was special and should not be recorded too often. That interview drove me crazy because I saw him say it as he was in the midst of redoing everything a million times. Absurd. So avoid this like death. Oh, speaking of death, yes, well, I mean, he didn't. He should have. And that's the way it goes. So keep on listening, friends. Thanks for joining me. Take care.